room is getting full and it is amazing. The room is getting full and it is amazing, wonderful. So um, I hope you got my instructions. My five minutes is almost over. So let me just get into it. So my name is Ayo Bola Chike Michael. You can call me Ayo. And I am uh, speaking from London. And uh, today, or right now, I am green. This morning, I was red, but now I am green. So I am so happy to be here. And we will hand over now the button to uh, Bolaji Aborishade, please. If you can um, take off your camera, great. If not, that's okay, just unmute and talk. If you can't talk where you are, type it in the chat. Let's keep it moving. Bolaji, please. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Ah, can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Good evening, everybody. We can hear you. Okay, thank God. We thank God for giving us um, another opportunity to be here um, this evening. Thank you um, for having us um, present uh, the program um, to us um, this evening. Um, Sister Ayobala, if you get to my slides. Oh, it's not ready yet for the slides. This is the icebreaker, Uncle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was going to say okay. that ah, we're trying to get minute. to know ourselves first. Yes. Ah. So what we're doing, okay, I'm going to hand it over to Ife. We'll get back to you, um, Uncle Bolaji. Ife, please. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ife Ayani. You can call me Ife. Um, today, for me, as being green, Welcome, Ife. So, so nice to hear you. I know you. Ife is my sister. Hugs. Um, let's hand over now to um, Al. If you can say your name and tell us where you're, you're speaking from and also how do you feel today? Are you red, amber or green? If you can't speak, please type it in the, for others, please just type it in the chat if you can't speak. And it's so nice, uh, Remy from Doncaster. Remy is at work. It's so nice to, to hear you. Welcome. Is Al there for us? <laughs> Hi, my name is Alice and I am speaking from Belgium. Uh, I would say today has been a, uh, I would take white. It's, it's yeah. Wow. Okay, that's great. It's. I would like to know what white stands for, please. <laughs> uh, peaceful. Um. That's beautiful. Welcome, Al, from Belgium. It's really nice to have you here. And it's nice to know that you are peaceful. And I'm receiving that peace from you. Ooh, Joy, are you there, Joy? If Joy is not there, Okwe Olua, please. Hi. Good Hi, Joy. I'm well, thank you. How are you, ma'am? I'm good, thank you. Oh, hey, my name is Joy, and I'm taken from Nigeria. Welcome. Really nice to hear you from Nigeria. What color are you today? You. Um... Excellent. Sorry? Sorry, ma'am, I didn't get your question. What color are you today? How do you feel? Do you feel green? That's the happy, great. Do you feel amber? Do you feel red? Or do you feel another color mm. like white? Oh, green. Green. Welcome, yeah. Joy from Nigeria. It's really nice to have you, and I'm glad that you are green. Also, I can mm. see that Sister Diane is mm -hmm. one. Today has been peaceful, restful, and she has chosen green. Welcome. Um, is uh, Mrs. Fadayomi there? Hello. Hello. Good day, everybody. Good day. Nice to join you today. Nice to have you, ma'am. I wish you best of luck in the program. Thank you so much. Yeah. Where are you calling from, ma'am? And what's your color today? I'm calling from Canada. 
Mm -hmm. My color today is green. Green. Wow. Nice, nice, Mrs. Fadayomi from Canada. It's really nice. Thank you. And I'm glad that you're green as well. God yeah. bless. Thank you for coming. Okay. Moline, is Moline there? Hello, everyone. My name is Moline. I'm speaking from South Africa. My day was very well. Wow. Moline from South Africa. Welcome. You said your day has been what color? Was very well. It's gone very well. So you would say probably green? Yes. Welcome, Moline. God bless you. This is amazing. We've had people from, we have from Belgium, we have from Canada, we have from um, USA, we have from UK, Nigeria. This is amazing. Okolua. Um, he, he or she said, sorry, I currently can't speak where I am. Okay, that's fine. Just tell us where you're um, pulling from on the chat and tell us how you feel today. And for others as well, um, I think I've used all my five minutes. It's up. It would have been nice to hear everyone's voice, but um, I've um, used up my five minutes. So let's continue the um, conversation in the chat. Please, um, this is before I do, singles ministry. And for those that are not single that have come to support us, we the singles, we've got, well, we the singles, <laughs> I'm married as well. <laughs> we've got energy and we, you know, we, we talk, we're happy. Um, so please do um, talk in the chat, um, write your name and where you're calling from and how you feel today. And I'll hand over back to Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Um... IOB, thank you for the icebreaker. I can see that lots of people today are green. I was going to say I'm red, but I think I'm green as well. I'm excited, I'm hot, everything together. So <laughs> anyway, I don't want, I don't have the color to choose for myself today. Thank you so much um, IOB for that uh, wonderful icebreaker. I'm sure at the end, uh, once we have uh, the talks today, we'll have more time to interact and get to know each other. And like she said, you know, we this is a singles program. I always say to my singles, get prepared before you come to this program. Hey, you never might know who is at the other end trying to meet someone, but if they see a black screen, how are they going to know who is behind that screen? So make an effort, you know, and if you can, please put on your camera so that someone can see you and never can tell. They might start a chat privately, you know, and get to know you. Yes, meet people, you know, get to know one another. So at this point, we're going to go straight to our talk today. And I'm so excited because we have um, two, you know, able people to help us with what we're going to look at today. Um, topic for today is self N O T before love. Mm. You know, we or if, you, if you're a driver, if you go a car, you know, every year you have to check your car and ensure that it's it's good for the road. So are you good to go into a relationship? Have you assessed yourself? So a diagnostic tool to self-discovery, self-MOT before love, a diagnostic tool before to self-discovery. That's what we're going to be looking at today. And I've got um, Elder... Bolaji Aborisha Day, one of the current serving elder in Blessed Oak SDA Church. He is a lawyer by profession. He loves the Lord. And I believe that he's well prepared to deliver the message to us today. And also got our able sister Ayavola that gave us the icebreaker. Um, she's also, she's a project manager by profession, a child of God, one of the praise team leaders in Blessed Hope SDA Church, and I'm sure she's ready, prepared to give us this message today. So I pray that as they go ahead to give us the word today, that God himself will use them. I know they're prepared, but if it takes God, you know, taking away what they've prepared and giving them a new message, I pray that it does so today. And at the end of today's message, we will be blessed. So sit back and enjoy. Sister Ayobi and uh, Elder Bolaji, over to you.
Okay, thank you so much, Sister Tisila Yomi, uh, for the introduction. I'm sorry, I was a little bit distracted earlier on. Um, I think I'm feeling green today, and I'm calling. Um, I'm in um, London, um, um, Essex. Um, and my name is Bola Jaboishadi, and I'm married um, with two children. But straight into the um, presentation this evening, um, the topic for our um, discussion um, today is self MOT before love, um, a, di a diagnostic tool. Um, to self-discovery, um, and it shall be presented by myself and um, sister um, Ayabola. Um, please feel free to make some notes. Um, if you are not in a position to do so, um, we will be um, sharing the slides um, with you afterwards. You're free. Um, if you want it, you know, just send an, um, your email address. And um, between myself, sister Ayabola, and sister um, Titilayomi, we will be sending you um, the slides um, for um, your um, reading. So to introduce um, the discussion this evening, um, have you ever stopped um, to consider exactly what you want from life? Um, you see, before you can, you know, to know, to, to, to go into any relationship and even to discover yourself, you, you actually need to know yourself. You need to know who you are. You need to know, you know, where you come from. Um, you need to know exactly what you want from life. Maybe you've taken the first step um, towards self-discovery, but haven't uncovered a path towards achieving your main goals. Um, so your goals, you know, it, it includes, you know, things like your dreams, your personal values, you know, um, um, talents, you know, things, you know, that you need to know about yourself, even your personality traits. It's very important, you know, for um, an individual, you know, to know their personality um, traits. Um, if we go on, you know, but awareness of these characteristics can give you plenty of insight into your own inner self. And the main thrux of our conversation this evening is about knowing our own inner self. Um, with, without you knowing yourself, um, if you go into any relationship without even knowing who you are, then it, it's difficult for you, you know, if you, you know, to even change, you know, someone else. But we'll get into that um, as time goes on. Um, you know, you need to know the day-to-day -day priorities are important. Um, but a life that's nothing more than a series of going through the same motions usually doesn't provide much um, enjoyment. And self-discovery might sound like a big intimidating concept, but it's really just a process of examining your life, yourself, figuring out what is missing, and taking steps towards those fulfillment. And those are the things that we're going to look at um, this evening. The, the first um, point I want to share with us this evening is, you know, to evaluate each area of your life and figure out what you want. And don't forget, you know, that we're looking uh, at our lives in detail. So it's an MOT, you know, where every aspect, you know, of our life, you know, is being looked at. So you need to evaluate every area of your life. You know, trust me, I've been there before. Um, that crushing moment when you have no idea of who you are. And there are times, if all of us are honest um, on the line this evening, there are times when we are discovering ourselves, we just find that, you know, who exactly am I? You know, who am I? Um, what you want to do, you know, um, in life, or even how to even tackle, you know, um, some of the mess, you know, that we've made, you know, for ourselves. Um, when we have done things the wrong way, when we have done things, you know, without actually knowing, you know, who, you know, we are. Um, I have once been a person, you know, without goals, um, without plans, and even without direction. And um, those were even my younger years, you know, when I didn't even know my left, you know, from my right. Um, I had no plans about, you know, for the future. Um, I didn't even know where, you know, whether I was going to go left or whether I was going to go right. Now, if you can relate to the above, the most important step you can take to begin with is identifying the most important areas of your life and setting, and setting goals based on your own personal desires and need. Remember, it's your own self MOT this time. So it's about you, not about um, your mom, your dad, not about your pending um, relationship. It's about um, you. Um, and I'm going to share, you know, with you, the next slide is the will of life. Um, I'm just going to go, you know, just through, you know, that will. Um, if we can have that, Sister Ebola. Okay, so if you look at the will of life, you see that there are um, four and um, seven um, facets, you know, there. So the first facet is spiritual, which is the most important. Um, in discovering yourself, you must know who you are in Christ. Um, it's very, very important. You know, you must know who you are in Christ. There are other things about our life that is important, you know, and that's your career, you know, what you want to do, what you want to become, um, you, you know, what you feel comfortable, you know, in doing, then family. Family is very important. And some of the things that we're discussing, you know, today, and um, even in the um, 
you know, questions um, earlier, um, later on, you know, will be around family, even coming together in a, into a relationship, you know, it breeds, you know, family. Then you talk, then you look at, you know, where you are financially, how you want to be um, in five years time, where you are now in 10 years time, you know, what are your finances like? What, what kind of finances do you want to have? Um, how wealthy, you know, do you want to become? Um, you know, how you attract wealth and things like that. Then intellectual, physical, and social. So these seven things are very, very important that you have to understand, you know, yourself. Um, if we go to the, um, if we skip the next, um, well, let's go to the next slide. It's the wheel of life as well. And I'm sure between myself and Sister Yabona later on, you know, we'll get to this. And this has most of the points that I mentioned earlier on. But the difference with this is that it has a scale of one to 10. So each and every one of us later on, you know, we must be able to look at where you are on the scale of one to 10, you know, on this. So we have spirituality, you have money and finances, career and work, health and fitness, you know, fun and recreation, environment, your community, you know, family and friends, um, you know, partner and love, um, personal growth and learning. And all these points, you know, relates back to your own indi individual self. Where are you? on this scale. And um, even as I'm speaking to you, you might be looking at it and see, you know, where you are. You see somebody, you know, um, here. Um, so let's take, for example, um, money and finances. Um, there's somebody who is on eight, you know, here, spirituality, there's somebody who's on eight as well. But you see, we go career work, you know, have somebody who's on six. So maybe they're not satisfied with their career that they have at the moment. Uh, they might want to change, you know, their career uh, and stuff like that. You know, you see here, partner in love, you see somebody who is just on one, you know, so that person I presume is single, um, probably um, is not even looking at all because if they are looking, perhaps that number will be a little bit higher. Um, it might not be a priority for them, you know, um, at the moment and so on um, and so forth. But it's very important, you know, for you, you know, to have, you know, something like an accountability um, template, you know, that you can put your scale on to know exactly, you know, what you want at what time and um, at what um, period. So the second thing um, is to identify, you know, your talents, your passion and dreams. Remember, we're still looking at ourselves individually. We're trying to discover who we are. We want to know who, you know, you know who I actually am. Now, a life without passion or dreams is one that you will definitely be tired of very quickly. No matter what you are doing, you need to find a way to implement those burning or these um, burning goals into your life in order to spark your creativity and help you learn more about what drives you. You must know what drives you. So for example, for me, Balaji, I love meeting people. Um, it's, it's, it's something that comes so natural, so easy to me. Um, and I, I, I love meeting people. Um, I love traveling as well. Um, I love mentoring um, people. Um, I have you know, so many things you know, that I love you know, to do. Um, I, 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 I love being able you know, to express myself you know, um, in front of people. Perhaps that's why you know, I opted to be um, a lawyer. Um, and the question I ask myself is, have I incorporated this into my life um, yet? And the answer that I can give to myself, you know, is yes. And I'm sure that for those of you who know me, you know, would know that, you know, that answer wouldn't be any other thing than yes. But for those who are listening as well this evening, I'm hoping that you're trying to reflect, although we're, I'm speaking so fast and it's going so fast, but you will have time to reflect, you know, um, on this in trying to know, you know, who, you know, who you are and how, you know, your personality affects, you know, the kind of relationship, you know, that you will go into. Now, whatever it is that scares you and excites you is something that you should pursue. If it's creative, that's an even bigger bonus since that will help you dig into the deeper aspects of yourself that you may not see on a regular basis. However, don't limit yourself to one passion. Don't limit yourself to one dream or to one talent. We are multifaceted beings and our numerous ab abilities will reveal to us, you know, who we are. And that's why you have people, you know, who are gifted in many areas. Um, you know, sometimes you may have a talent in one area or you may have a gift, you know, in more than one area. But the more you do these things, the more you hone these skills, you become better, you know, um, in them. But still remember that all this is going back to identifying, to knowing who exactly, you know, who, you know, you are. If we go to the third slide, identifying your purpose. And here, I'm going to tarry a little bit here. Um, this is very, very important. Um, if you've not really taken anything that I've said earlier on, you should take this because a life without a purpose is a baseless and is a useless life. You must have a purpose. You must have a purpose. Now, purpose is something that many people struggle with. 
even now and then, you know, I still struggle with it a bit. And I'm constantly asking myself, what am I doing? And is it ultimately going to assist me in my journey? You see, every single one of us, you know, must know the purpose, you know, for which, you know, we are living. And it's very, very important, um, especially when you're going into a relationship, you must know the purpose that you're going into that relationship for. And you, and with, and without you understanding, you know, that purpose, post you may find out that you will get into the relationship and you will mess up or you may mess up and by the time you then realize that wow you know this is what i've done you know it, it, the scar you know would be there and you know this evening you know i pray for each and every one of us you know to you know i am assuming that we are all you know um very good you know christians and you know we seek direction you know from the lord you know, to let us know, you know, what our purpose is and to let us be able to walk in the purpose for which God, you know, has created us. Now, remember, it's all going back to yourself. So it has nothing to do with, you know, your friend or your family um, or your parents. You must be able to identify the God-given purpose, you know, that God has created you for. For some people, their purpose in life is just perhaps maybe to sing. For some, it might be, you know, to be hospitable. You know, for some, it might be, you know, to, uh, uh, to evangelize. Whatever it is, you know, that God has created you for, you must, you know, realize, you know, that purpose. Now, the importance of this is that if you know your purpose and you start dating someone who does not understand, you know, what purpose is, they may drag you down. They may pull you, they may pull you down. But when you understand what your purpose is, even when you are caught in, when you know that the guy or the lady that you're moving with, what maybe what they want is different from what you want. Maybe you want a serious relationship. Maybe they just want a fling. When you know what your purpose is, when you know you know where you know what exactly you know you want, then what you find is that you will be able to stand firm on on that precept of life that you want. So the truth is that what um, the truth is that we never know what we're working towards. But having at least a big a big purpose will help us set will help set us on a path of fulfillment and happiness. So for my, for example, my ultimate purpose is to help others. I love helping others. And now helping others may not be um, just financial. It might be sharing your time. It might be sharing your wisdom. It might be sharing your knowledge. Um, you know your understanding of life. All that is about helping, you know, people. No matter what I do, I try to do it in a way that will, bene that will be beneficial to others. Whether it's volunteering, writing, or any other hobby, hobby, I try to figure out how to put a spin on it that helps someone on the other side. Now, if you're someone who is like me, and you then, you know, marry or you are into a relationship with someone who does not like people around them, then you know that there will be a conflict in that relationship. And that is why it is very, very important, you know, to know, you know, who you are so that you will be able to attract, you know, um, you know, the right um, person and um, you even, you know, attract the right person, um, you know, in your life. A purpose will definitely kickstart the self-discovery um, process on help, uh, um, to help, uh, 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 on help, you carve a path that is unique, you know, to you. So when, when, when you have this purpose in mind, it will kickstart that self-delivery purpose in carving something that is unique just, you know, to yourself alone. And the next two um, points, you know, that I have, you know, they're very just simple points, um, you know, after reflecting, you know, on this is the fourth one is, you know, start a daily journal. Um, you know, like for me, for example, I love reading, but I despise, you know, journaling, you know, writing things, you know, down. It's honestly one of my least favorite things in this world. And I wish I could just, you know, it could just go away. You know, journals are perfect for learning more about yourself because they give you a safe place to express your feelings without fear of judgment. You see, these expressions will allow you to evaluate your thoughts, patterns, as well as patterns in your behavior and actions when you look back on previous um, entries. Remember, it's still about, you know, that self-discovery. It's about knowing yourself. And that is why it's always good to keep a journal of everything that you do, you know, throughout the day, um, you know, throughout the week, throughout the months. And when you go back to them, it helps, you know, in knowing exactly, you know, um, who you are. No matter what your chosen activity is, make sure it helps you to evaluate yourself regularly. We must be in a situation or in a position where we're able to 
self, you know, regulate ourselves, you know, evaluate ourselves, you know, um, regularly. And the last um, slide, you know, from me is, you know, actively seek new experiences. You know, in life, um, stagnation is not um, an option. We need, you know, to um, seek out new experiences. You see, when we get comfortable with life, we often stop learning and exploring ourselves. Remember, I said exploring ourselves, yourself, you know, not the next person, but yourself. Now, the solution, push yourself out of your comfort zone. Many of us are so tied in our comfort zone um, that we don't want to explore new frontiers or um, new heights. You know, make an effort to try something new every day. Don't hesitate to engage in activities that scare you. However, don't do anything that is unnecessary life-threatening, you know, just for the sake of getting more experience, i.e. bungee jumping. I won't do that because <laughs> I don't want to break, you know, my legs or bones or anything like that. But the point here is that, you know, on a more serious note is, you know, let's try to discover ourselves. Let's try to do things that we ordinarily, you know, may not, you know, have done. And you never know, you know, the skills, you know, that God, you know, has deposited in you. And even through that, you discover, you know, who you are. What you'll discover as you push yourself further out of your comfort zone is that there are things out there that will spark a fire in you or trigger a new desire or a need that you didn't even know you had. On the same note, you will find things that you didn't know you hated that you now know that you can avoid. You know, the point here is that you absolutely have to try new things in order to continue learning about yourself. Otherwise, you are going to get too comfortable and fall into the same habit of losing yourself time and time again. Now, finding yourself is a difficult process but it is well worth it if you seek to improve your life and your, uh, and your relationship, you know, with yourself. And, um, you know, I pray this evening that as we reflect, you know, upon this, um, it will help us. This is not exhaustive. It's not all the points, you know, that one can, um, you know, find uh, in, in the path to self-discovery, but it is a start. It is a start. And I pray that as we inculcate, you know, these, you know, points into our daily lives, Again, remembering that it is about discovering who you are, about knowing who you are, knowing your innermost feelings, knowing the, your, your passions, knowing the things that you like, knowing the things that you don't like, you know, it will help us, you know, balance us, you know, when we eventually, you know, want to find love and seek love. Thank you and God bless and thanks for listening um, to me. So Sayabola, over to you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Right. Thank you so much. I would like people to unmute and say, I'm here. Yeah. 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 Oh, great. I'm, I'm here. here. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Really just, it's nice to, you know, like I said the other time, technology, we're all in a room where how many people now? We're about 35 of us and you can hear a sound. <laughs> So I just wanted to be sure that you're all here. And um, I pray that we have been blessed so far. So I've got as well um, a few slides to run through. Um, Elder Bolaji has uh, kindly uh, spoken to us about purpose, about um, discovering who we are. And the next question now is what happens after knowing your purpose? What happens after knowing the direction of life in which you as a person would like to go. This is love or not love, married or not married. So we have done all that work of the wheel of life. Do we all remember that wonderful wheel of life? I hope some people took out their cameras to take a photo of it because it's an amazing tool to um, actually help discover yourself where you are on the, on the significant point of the wheel of life. If you didn't get to take a camera, um, a photo shot of that, no problem. We can share the slides later, and you can you, you, you can do that for yourself. But then, like I said, what do what do we do? Well, you know, what happens after knowing your purpose? Having a why and a purpose will ignite your quest for greater purpose in life. So yeah, it's good that you have a why, or you know your purpose, or you have a direction. When you do know that direction, it will ignite your your quests, people will be looking at you and they will know that there's some, what energy is behind this person? Why is this person excited when it comes to teaching children? Or why is this person excited when it comes to uh, feeding the homeless? Or 
or doing some system or some app on IT or, you know, or, or connecting with people. That's because you already know your why and you already have an idea of your, the direction of your journey. Your decisions will be informed by the why's, not just how life comes to you. So if you don't make those decisions for yourself, or if your purpose does not make the decision for what you do, life will make it. Life will make it. We all know about paying bills. We all know about having to run to work. The, the, the uh, rat race, they call it. Being in the hamster and just running every day. Life will just make that decision for you. But if you have that purpose and you have that direction, you understand what direction you're going, then your decisions will be shaped by that. Your why will fire you up to get right tools to set you on the right path. During the lockdown, for example, for me, um, I realized I've always had um, this thing for children um, and it's, it's one of my many things, but during the lockdown, I just realized that, do you know children also have their issues about you know, having all everybody to, to stay inside? Children also would like to um, maybe listen to some stories or express themselves or, and I, I just thought, oh, why not a maybe a YouTube channel or something, you know? It just and then all of a sudden I just got fired up. I started looking at how can I create a YouTube, how can I do a, a recording? And another thing, I like presenting. I like I, I can get shy sometimes, but all of a sudden, when I get on, on the stage, you see a different person. I like being in drama. I, I, I like drama, I like presenting. I just get fired up and then I get creative ideas. I want to do stuff. That's because as um, um, Elder Bolaji was talking about earlier, when you already know the direction or your why already or your purpose, then th that why will fire you up to get the right tools. You will start giving deeper thoughts to invest in yourself. Ah, invest in yourself. So that's one big part of what I'll be talking about today. Why not think about it this way? you have a direction of, you have a, 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 a life direction, you have a purpose. If you sit in one place, that purpose will not happen. For example, the way we're on Zoom right now, all of us have to take some steps to get into where we are today, to, to being able to see you or you able to see me and hear me. If I just sat on my chair in my kitchen as I am now, and just sat down there staring at my laptop, the program will start and know what, I mean, life will be going on and I won't be there. But you have to start giving deeper thoughts. It's because of how life has been now that we all had to invest in ourselves and now know how to use technology more. Now know how to use Zoom, for example. Build on your wings, the small and the large. Well, what are you good at? Remember the wheel of life we talked about. Which areas are you already good at? Which area do you have small wings? Which areas do you have big wings? Build on those wings and they, they will accumulate and then they will help you to get to where you are going. Build, learn, grow into a vision of yourself. Don't just have the vision of yourself. You've got to build, you have to learn and you have to grow into it. And that's it, start investing in yourself. So like I said, a core of what we would, like uncle was saying, that if you don't take anything away uh, from what he said earlier on, he wants you to take away um, purpose. Today, for me, if you don't take away anything, please take away this phrase. It sounds like a cliche, but by the time we go through it, we know that it's more than that. Invest in yourself. So for some reason, we all have come to, we all come to the, the before I do ministry or maybe listen to videos or, you know, have this conversation with people around singleness and all that for one reason, probably to learn more about love, probably for you to find, you might be there listening to me and you want to find that ideal person for you. Who is that ideal woman for me? Who is that ideal man for me? Um, it's hard work. We all know. <laughs> but. While we are doing all the hard work, running here and there, trying to uh, um, connect with people, trying to meet with people, trying to research into their lives, trying to know more of ourselves and all the things that Elder Bolaji spoke about earlier on. 
remember that it's a waiting room. It's a waiting room to get to that goal, that, that, that final goal of finding that love, that, that person that you will spend the rest of your life uh, with. And while you are in the waiting room, brethren, we must learn to invest. When I first came to the United Kingdom some years ago, um, I, re I, just, I, I realized that when people are at the bus stop, they will open their metro, they will bury their heads in their metro, they're reading metro. If I get on the train, metro. If I get on the ground, people are on the metro. <laughs> What's this metro? It's like our own daily times in Nigeria, but I don't get on the bus in Nigeria and everybody is, is reading, reading something. And I just realized that these people have, there's something that I can learn from that. Don't just sit down and stay into space. Okay, even if you stay into space, use your brain, reflect, think about something. Now it's not metro anymore, it's mobile phone. When you sit on the bus, people on their mobile phones, they're doing one thing or another. So while we are in the waiting room of our lives, for those of, of, of you who are single um, and looking for love, you're waiting to, for that love, everything to click, or you are finding it, like finding Nemo, goes all around looking for, <laughs> for Nemo's father, goes around looking for Nemo. While you're finding love, make that experience positive by investing in yourself. And I want you to remember that the value returns on self-investment is immeasurable. It's immeasurable. No one except on the day that we die, and that's it, the Yorubas will say, meaning it's the day that you die that you actually rest. That's the day that you can't even take anything in again. That's, that's the day that there's no growth anymore. But once you are breathing and you're living, there is still room for improvement. There's room for development. And so while we are waiting, spend that time to invest in yourself. Now look at this word cloud here. The, my point here on this slide is never underestimate the investment you can make on in yourself. Investing in yourself is the best investment ever. So don't think, oh, it's selfish. Let me invest into others, pour my life out into others and not invest in myself. No, it's the other way around. Invest in yourself first and then God will give you the strength and the direction to pour into others. Look at this word cloud. We talk about having good work ethics, values, being a learner, being in control, being inspirational, responsible, being persuasive, opportunistic, self-aware of yourself empowered, um, having great relationships, having courage, being a risk taker, um, being consistent, uh, being flexible when needed, competitive resilience, decisiveness, intellect, passion, initiative, humility, confidence, forgiveness, come on. Who does it? This is the ideal person. This is the ideal person. This is the ideal man that any, any sister wants to marry. This is the ideal sister that any man wants to marry. But it doesn't just happen like that. We have to do the work. And doing the work is called investing in yourself. Because we're not children that have to be taken to school, taken everywhere, you now have to be the police of your own self, the police of your own life. You have to be in control of investing in yourself. So today, when you came, uh, we talked about tools, you know, MOT, self MOT. And you would remember while well, Gabolaji was talking, he did go through a tool, the wheel of life, which I've really fallen in love with, honestly. Here's another tool that I would like to just run through with you in terms of investing in yourself. I mean, we, um, we people living in the 21st century now are so lucky, we are blessed. We don't have to go to the library to find information. We don't have to depend on our elders to say it into our ears before we get information. We just need to go on our phones and go, <laughs> go on Google or, or YouTube or stuff and learn. So, hey, this is just the tip of the iceberg because it's this, our, this program is just like an hour, 10 minutes or so. So I'll just be going through just this few bits, but this is just a pointer. 
you can go ahead and look after doing the wheel of life um, diagnostic of yourself. Then you can do this and then start looking, start tailoring what sort of investment will be good for me as a person. Remember, we talked about being in the waiting room, not waiting to say that, oh, this person is going to come into my life and compliment me. No, we want to get to the point that you are the best version of yourself and you attract the best person for you. If you are not the best version of yourself, you don't have an idea of your journey, you don't have an idea of where you want to go, you probably attract somebody as, you know, a fluid all over the place, does not also know, but they know they have feelings for you. And then you get into this relationship and then hell, hell breaks loose. Um, someone has raised their hands. I just wanted to say, maybe you can type, um, Olua Kemi, could you kindly type it in the chat? Cause we're taking, we're gonna be taking questions straight after this um, uh, uh, presentation. But for now, I just wanted to run through the slide. So uh, if you're raising your hand to ask a question, kindly type it and um, uh, Sister Elizabeth will, will respond to you. Thank you. So let's go into these uh, tools to invest in yourself while you wait. Always show up. Always show up. Be your own police. Always show up. Um, I have a thing with time. I'm not very good with time. I struggle with time. But then I realized that some of the mentors that I follow, some of the people that I see, when I listen to their podcast, they will tell me if I need to be somewhere at five, I aim to get there at 10 minutes to five or 15 minutes to five. And even my dad, I remember when we were younger, my dad, one, that's one thing he will quarrel with me about. No, you can't, if you need to get somewhere at six, you cannot be leaving the house at quarter to six. So one of, one of the characteristics of very successful people, people who have direction, who, who are able, who have a grip on themselves is to always, you, you are a man of your word, you're a woman of your word. You say that you will show up, show up. And I've learned something. Yeah, we're all human beings. If you are not able to show up, don't just keep quiet. Grab your phone and say, I'm sorry, something has come up, I'm not able to come. That is integrity. So we must learn to be um, a, a, a man or woman of our words, as God, our Heavenly Father, wants us to be. Always show up, be on time, be your own police. Be your own police. I always say that, um, a friend of mine says to me that, ah, I was, what's the, what is it? Ah, you want to do Prince too? You want to do? And I say to her that I know where I want to get to. And I know my mode of learning as well. Some people have these photographic brains that they don't even, they need just to look at it once and that's it. Sometimes I need to read, read something three times or four times. So when I know, like right now at work, when I know that we have, maybe I have a business meeting or something, I'm presenting a report, I will read it three times, four times, because I want to be my own police. I want to be there and show quality, good quality. So you know yourself. If you are not good in this area, be your own police, push yourself to the better side of that area. Keep doing things, keep doing things. Consistency and repetition is a sharp tool. So in our tool today, just imagine we have a box of tools. We've talked about showing up. We've talked about being your own police. Um, we also have consistency and repetition is a sharp tool. Don't just start something and drop it. Don't be mediocre in what you're doing. It is all um, practice. It takes practice. It takes responsibility. It takes getting people to be your accountability partner. Don't think you've known it all. Oh, I'm an adult, I'm 37 years old, nobody can tell me what to do. Really? The president of America is being told what to do. He's being managed very well. So don't think, and when you get married as well, you will need to, to work with your partner. Working with them involves also being able to be consistent and being able to repeat until you get to the perfection. Develop your strength, strengthen your strength. Strengthening your strength is a big thing for me. We are all created with strengths. Nobody can say, I don't have any strength. I can't, uh, I, I'm not like this person. That, you can't compare, don't compare yourself with anybody. Just sit down, don't, don't say, oh, 
ah, this person is so articulate, they're, they're talking so fluently, I can't talk like that, so therefore I don't have the strength. No. You conduct a 360 feedback for yourself. Like I said earlier on, life is good for us these days. We have a lot of tools. Grab your phone, go on, your, on YouTube, you will see that there are lots of tools there to help you conduct a 360 feedback. I learned that at work. And I was surprised and it actually helped my confidence. Where, where I thought that I wasn't doing well or where I, I was only focusing on my weaknesses and thinking, oh, I'm not as good as these people. When a 360 feedback was done a few years ago on me, I cried. I thought, really? And because a 360 feedback, they won't write their name. So you don't know who wrote what. And I've seen for some other people that they've done it for some other people and they say that, oh, this person is rubbish at this, this person is not good at that. So people will tell you the truth. My cousin last year, it was her 40th last year, um, October, in January, she sent me a link and said, sis, would you kindly complete this? I give you the next four weeks to complete this for me. I, I'm not going to know who completed what, but there are about 50 of you completing a 360 feedback for me. That is going to help her to identify her strengths. Where is it that I'm good? Let me focus on that. Where is it that I'm not good? Then I can work on that. For example, I know from feedback, it was, I think as a teenager that my dad did say to me that you need to write a book. You must write a book. I'm still trying to write that book and by God's grace, I will write it. It was also as a teenager that my mom says, oh, you're such a good entertainer. You're such a, you should become a lawyer. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but I do what well, I've worked with lawyers before at the Ministry of Justice. I work with clinicians right now, but a, a big part of my value by being valued in my team is being able to um, present to people, to negotiate, to influence. I work at care homes and they say, Ayo, oh, you know, when I come, everybody wants, you know, they're happy. I could see the energy in the room. And then my manager will say, remember to mention this and mention that. And they will just use that good part of me to bring in what we want to bring in. And I began to see that, that oh, thank God, that is a strength. So please, you must identify your strength. If you don't know how to go about it, conduct a 360 feedback. Get a few friends and a few family members and let them say, what are the great things about you? What are the not so great things about you? That will help you. And when they come back with the not so great things, Acknowledge your weaknesses. Acknowledge your weaknesses. We're not all perfect. We're human beings. So if the weakness comes and they say that, hey, you're not good with timing. You're not good with timing. Don't get all defensive <laughs> and give all the, just, okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. And the next thing is start thinking of an elimination plan. How do I eliminate that weakness? About two, three people have told me that I'm not good with timing. How do I eliminate it? What do I do? Start talking to people. And you know one thing, when we start, when we, we take the first step, God meets us there. He, he, God takes us, as soon as you take that first step, he will send help to you. Acknowledge your weaknesses, start an elimination plan and start eliminating those weaknesses. Everyday life education is so important. We've talked about this, that learning, goes on until we take our very last breath. Learning goes on. So imagine if you're waiting, you're waiting for that right person for you and you're just waiting, you know, just staring into mid air. The person where they are as well, imagine if they too, they're just staring and they're not learning on a daily basis. I always say to my friends that when I got pregnant with my first child, I was shocked because I saw a totally different version of myself. I saw that I could get so irritable, I could lash out, and I'm not usually like that. It was so out of character. How do I deal with that with another person living in the same roof with me? So this time, I, I'm, not, I'm not single, I'm not living alone. I'm living with my partner, I'm pregnant as well. How do I learn how to deal with that, with that irritability? Communication then comes in, communicate how I feel. Say that I can't do it. Don't just pour myself into everything and then start getting annoyed with the whole world. That was a different part of myself that I learned. So 
Education continues on a daily basis. Find your niche, what's your why? I can't go into this more because Elder already spoke about it. He, his whole time of speaking to us earlier on was about finding your why. And it is that why that will fire you to do what you want to do. It is that why that will fire you to, to, to the direction that you need to be. And then that person, that special person that comes into your life will come in and meet you at a good place. At a good place. We want to make ourselves the best version of ourselves and attract the right person. Because that person too, hopefully by God's grace, will be at the, at the best place of their life. Make smart goals. Smart goals. I'm a project manager. I, I, I learned some things that you can't just give a vague statement. I want to be the best husband in the world. What does that mean? I want to be the best wife in the world. What does that mean? You have to be specific about it. What does that best wife mean? Oh, I want to be able to do this by the end of this year. So SMART stands for, um, it's, it's an acronym. It has to, the goal has got to be uh, specific. The goal has got to be measurable. Um, what's, what does A stand for? Accu Accurate? Achievable. Achievable. achievable, thank you. Achievable. Yay, I've got people. Yes, achievable. Um, relatable, is it relatable R? Or relevant, it could be uh, realistic. realistic. Realistic, relevant, yeah. thank you. And T, what does T Timely. stand for? Timeline. Time. Time. We can't just say, oh, uh, you know, is it by 2025 or by 2035 or 2050 that we will arrive at this thing? So make your goals smart. And last, last on this list for me is be your own successful projects. Brethren, God created you. God himself, the creator of the whole earth, created you. This had to sink into my head for me to realize my own self-worth. And if you don't have self-worth, it will affect your relationship in marriage. Don't bother if you're looking for love and you have problem with confidence, you have problem with self-worth, valuing yourself, pause. Pause on the finding love. Don't find love now. Work on yourself. Because people have regretted not working on themselves, getting into that relationship, um, not being a best project of themselves, um, not having that self-worth, getting into that relationship, and it just, it just all comes crumbling down. So be your own successful project. So um, we are at the end of my um, presentation, but there's a clip that Elder Bolaji so kindly brought over, um, showed, showed me. And uh, there's this woman, um, Ibukuma Woshika, she's an amazing woman. I love listening to her. Um, whoops, sorry. I'm just going to stop sharing. And if you give me just two minutes, I will quickly multitask and get that clip on. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to share it now. Um, Sister Elizabeth, could you kindly let me know if you're seeing what I'm seeing? Can you see Ibukwa Woshika? Yes, okay. I can. You can see Great. And I'm going to, and can you hear us as well? The greatest disservice yes. you do to yourself to marry the wrong increase the volume a bit you. okay uh i might need to increase volume here am i still sharing yes thank you one of the greatest disservice you would do to yourself is to marry the wrong person for you mm. In my books, 
your spouse is a key success factor, whether you're a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. And choosing what is even more important for a woman, mm. because men have more room to navigate okay. mm. than a woman does. Because in the context of our own culture, yes. our African culture, mm, yes. she's expected, and in biblical terms, she's expected to be submissive mm. to her husband. Now, you better be sure that the guy you want to submit you, your life mm. to and have to answer to is a guy who has the capacity to handle you, to handle the life of who you, you are. are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if the guy does not have the capacity to grow with, with you, you well. with mm. your vision, mm. with your ambition, mm. and as you emerge, mm. there will be problems. Mm. Mm. So and <laughs> I've watched many women struggle. Mm. Fact, so I am forever grateful to the man that I call my husband because I have seen his commitment to the full emergence of who I am. Yeah. Sometimes it's tough because, mm. you know, sometimes outsiders make it difficult for your spouse. Yeah. Outsiders. You know, and all of that, especially when you're, you're, you're a woman. But in all of those things, it makes me understand why it's really important yeah. that as a young woman, I always say to young women, don't make a choice of a spouse until you have a sense of who you are. Okay. Because if you do, then you, it's easier for you to consider other things other than he's rich, tall, and handsome. I always say to men, only a foolish man mm. does not understand if he puts his wife down, that he puts himself Look down. down. Mm. That's one. Two, the Bible says your wife is your helper. <laughs> the quality of the help you get is the quality of the helper you allow to emerge. Yeah. Mm. If you allow your wife to be the best of herself, you get the value for it. In your day of trouble, you know, men run into trouble. Businesses yes. go wrong. Careers can get stopped. You can lose jobs. You can have crisis. You can. But imagine a team of a husband and wife that are both doing well. When one is down, the other holds up. Yeah. When one is up, the other one supports. You have an incredible team that creates value for you. So your wife is your asset, your God-given asset mm. that is meant to bless your life. If you allow her to be the best of herself, mm. you get the best helper in your day of trouble. Okay. I hope we were blessed with that. Can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Okay. Um, I can see Okafor mm -hmm. raising, uh, Okafor Emmanuel raised hands. Please just bear with me one more moment and I'll be done. Yeah. And then we'll go into the interactive session. Thank you. And the very last bit um, is just a two minute reflection exercise. Yeah. Um, that we, we would ask you. So don't write it in the chat because this is your life. You remember when we we're talking about, um, uh, the title of today, self-MOT. So if I'm doing a self-MOT, I wouldn't want to, um, you know, I would need some psychological safety. I, I wouldn't want to bring my whole life um, before you people. Yes, we're all friends here, but this is serious and I'm talking about my life. So from what you heard today, you heard from Elder Aborisha Day, I'm talking about purpose, discovering yourself. He talked about the wheel of life. And you've heard from myself talking about investing in yourself, becoming the best version of yourself so that you can attract the, the right person that would be able to handle the person that you are. So from what you've heard today, could you write down, grab a sheet of paper or your phone, wherever you want to note this, write down your own takeaway for today. What's your takeaway? What, what, what stood out for you? What spoke to you? And what will you do differently? Because like we, we were talking about smart goals, we don't want today um, just to be a talk shop. We want that tangible part of it as well.
one more minute to write your own takeaway for today and what you will do differently in your own projects. This is project you. Okay, so, um, and the, the very last slide on our presentation is, we wanna say to you, enjoy the experience, enjoy your life. And don't forget everything that we've said today. And uh, we are grateful that you listened to us. I'm going to hand over now, just to let you know that there is a copy of um, the um, slides. We can share that uh, with you. Um, if you drop your email address uh, with us, or your telephone number, we can send it by WhatsApp as well. Um, I will, I'll hand over now to Sister Elizabeth to take us through the um, interactive session. Thanks. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, um, Elder Balaji, Aburisha Day, and Sister Ayobi. She's my friend, I always call her Ayobi. So <laughs> her name is Ayobola, but I call her Ayobi. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, that was really, really good. Now, from um, elder section, one thing that jumped out at me is identifying your purpose. You know, that is so key. If you do not identify your purpose and you're sure and you're certain of it, and you, you are working in that purpose, it will be difficult for you to choose someone. If you choose someone that doesn't align with your purpose. I recall when I was dating, you know, my husband, the, one of the things I told him is, look, I've got a ministry and to know that I want to know from him if he'll be on board with me, with that ministry. And guess what? He, he, he accepted that, yes, he knows that I've got a ministry, I've got a music ministry, I've got the singles ministry, and they're so dear to my heart, is what drives me, is what makes me excited, he needs to support me. And guess what? It gives me 100% support. Imagine a pastor wanting to marry and the lady is dating doesn't want to be a shepherdess like we call them and he's saying he still wants to go ahead you know that that person is already creating problems for themselves in their future home so that is so key in you know what uh, one of the things that elder said today and then when um sister yobola spoke one of the things i took away from there is invest in yourself Invest in yourself. Like, I mean, like she said, being single is not just, it's not a waiting room that you just wait there doing nothing, waiting for something to happen. Hello, life is now. Life is happening now. Invest in yourself. And by the time you invest in yourself, you'll be able to recognize that person you want to meet. But if you are living alone like, hey, I mean, the person you're going to meet is going to be somewhere around that area as well. So invest in yourself and make sure you're up there so that you recognize that kind of person you want to be in your life as well so i'm going to open the floor now for questions 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 um sister ayobola is going to help us out with the answers elder Abolages. and we've got so many experience people in the house i don't know if um pastor olare pastor israel olare is still in the house so any of the questions that <laughs> we can answer we have so many experienced people in the house that can help us out. So this is your opportunity, fire away. If you're not, um, if you don't want to speak, write your question in the chat. Myself or Sister Yobola will read it out and then we can, you know, answer them. So the floor is open for questions. And I was going to say, please drop your contact details in the chat. If you want a copy of the um, presentation, if you want a copy of the recording, you can drop your email address. And if you don't get you know, our communications and you want to get our notifications when, whenever we have our meetings,
drop your number so you can drop that directly to myself or IOB and then we'll take note of that and we can get the recording across to you as well as uh, the slides. Thank you. So questions? Everywhere has gone quiet. Or any, if you have any contribution, anything that drops in your mind. Okay, there's a question here. How do you discover your purpose? Is there a test? I think just, okay. is there a test one can take? Discover your purpose? Another question, ideas to invest in, in oneself. Mr. Yobola, can you give us some ideas? She Investing in your one self, what are the things they can do? Is it okay to push that on to Uncle Israel, please? I'm just um, doing some administrative stuff in the background or El Davolaji. Okay. Or one of our friends to pick up that question, sorry. What, what was the question? How ideas of investing in yourself? What are the some of the ideas of how to invest in yourself? Uh, well, I mean, my from my perspective, I would say um, in investing in yourself, you 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 first need to know the things um, that uh, yes, you know, reading reading is um, reading is um, very important. Um, you know, seeking seeking knowledge. But with that as well is also knowing um, who you are. And um, in knowing who you are, um, just like I can see here, um, it leads to you being, you know, having self-confidence um, in yourself. Um, also knowing your why, knowing why you are doing what you're doing. Um, you know, trying to find, you know, things that will add value um, to your life. Um, as we're all Christians here, you know, the first place to go really is to go to God, you know, seek him, um, in prayer and, you know, God will speak to us in various, you know, ways. It might be through your dream. It might even be through your pastor, um, you know, through nature. Um, sometimes you can even discover, you know, who you are through nature walk, you know, walking very early in the morning or later, late in the evening. Um, you know, there are things, you know, that will just come into your consciousness, uh, you know, during, uh, you know, those period. But in investing, your, in investing in yourself as well, you know, take courses, um, you know, travel, um, you know, try, try to know the things, you know, that makes you happy, that makes you tick. Um, you know, even if there are things that are negative, you know, if, if things that could get you angry or things like that, you know, just, just try to just try to know yourself. Um, and in doing that, you're investing um, in yourself. Um, you know, have a mentor. That is very, very important. Have a mentor, have an accountability partner. Um, you know, there are many people in life, um, they, 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 they struggle because they, they want to go on the right path. But... Ah, could 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 that person please mute their um or could I um since I about that it mute um there are people who struggle they want to go on the right path but because they haven't got anybody they are accountable to and they still they what they find is that they find themselves you know falling into the same ditch or every um you know every now and then and all the time so but when you have somebody who you are accountable to then you find that even if you want to go in the wrong way, um, that person will pull you, you know, will pull you up. Um, let me take, you know, um, myself and sister, Sister Lairi, for example, when she wanted to um, write her book, um, the, um, the book, um, I'm trying to find the um, um, book now. But when 30 she wanted days to get for dating and relationship. 30, that's it, 30 days. For, uh, not get for dating and relationship um you know she called me she spoke to me about it i encouraged her 
And she says, you know, Brabola, I want you to be my accountability partner and, um, you know, keep nudging me. And um, that was exactly, you know, what I did. Um, and at no time did I feel that I was, you know, overbearing or pressuring her because she just gave me the authority to just nudge her anytime and everything like that. So I did. And that gave birth, you know, um, you know, to that book. But the point to this is that if she had not done that, she may not have known the potential, you know, that she has. And that's very important, you know, with every one of us having, you know, someone, um, you know, to guide, you know, and to, um, you know, mentor, you know, and to mentor you. There's Pastor Caleb on the line. I think he's he's still there. There's um, Pastor Laure. There are many experienced people. Yeah, let, um, me, let me just chip in. Yes. I'll just chip in. I'm still driving. Oh, sorry. I'm I may not be able to show my camera, but I'm still driving. Uh, so what I want to say is sometimes single pre pre people put their lives on hold because people advise them if you develop yourself, the man may not want you because you'd be too much for him. Uh, for example, they said, oh, you have a master's, don't try to get a PhD, or oh, you're renting, you can afford to buy, don't buy a house, because if you do, uh, then he will not, you know, you, you'll be too much for him, or live your life to the full. The person that is meant for you will find you or you will find them, or God will bring you together. So whatever you need to do to keep developing yourself, certification classes, change of career, career advancement. Some people will not take the promotion because they said, if I become this, therefore somebody will not. Why, why live your life in the shadow of who you are because of somebody else that you have not even seen or you don't even know? Or if you meet someone who is threatening that they can't marry you because you are advancing, it's not the right person for you. You'll be miserable. Look, I tell people all the time, I cannot use my singleness to compare to anybody's singleness because I really was never single, okay? Let me put it that way. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that yeah, I was single. I was not always married. Okay, let's let me take that back. What I'm saying is that some people have singleness that is long singleness. But the, the statement I'm about to make is loneliness in singleness cannot be compared to loneliness in a bad marriage. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. You may say, I'm lonely. I want somebody. I want to be married. I want to be married. If you marry an insecure man, you will be lonely and miserable for a long time. Okay, a long time. And it will be miserable because you have somebody you think should love you, but the person loves themselves more than they love you. They don't care about you. They just want to have their selfish needs or apparent desires met. So, be yourself fully before you join yourself to somebody. And if you see signs of insecurity showing up in a person you are dating, run. Run for your life. Because the singleness that is insecure, I'm talking about a single insecure man or a single insecure woman who does not have self-confidence will lead to insecure people who will make each other's life miserable. So develop yourself, you know, fully yourself. Come to the table with strengths. Like uh, Mrs. Awashika was saying, you know, any man who does not know that the woman that is well read or, uh, you know, uh, well certificated or all those that have strengths is an asset, is a loser, okay? In the Bible, in, in Psalm 144, verse 12, it says, I will make your daughters pillars after palace style. Pillars after palace style. So women are meant to be pillars 
It says the men shall be plants in their use, like trees planted by the rivers of water, re deeply rooted. But women, pillars. So if you cannot develop yourself to become a pillar because you are thinking a man will be insecure for you, then he's not the right person for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the words of wisdom. Thank you so much. That is really I'm deep. I'm clapping right here. Thank you. Really deep. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any other question? I think somebody said, how, do, how can they discover their purpose? Is there a test they can take or so? There was a question like that in the chat. And um, my UK daddy, Elder Burisha, they thank you for dropping that in my book. I've got a book on singles relationship, you know, it's entitled 30 Days Nugget for Dating and Relationship. So if you want a copy, drop me a line on WhatsApp, then we can arrange that. I've dropped my number there. So contact me for a copy of the book if you want that. So we've got lots of nuggets that you can, you know, glean on to help you in your relationship journey. Yes, any other question? Question, let them keep flowing in. I can see Andrew's hands. Uh, okay, go ahead, please. Unmute yourself and um, ask your question. Andrew? Hi, everyone. Hello. Yes, I, uh, hi. I, uh, I just had some two cents, I actually just um, posted it in the chat um, pertaining to purpose. You know, and um, I can recall, I think it was in that book, The Purpose Driven Life, I think, I don't remember, but I think that re what really came out was just the fact that, you know, our primary purpose is to, is to really worship and serve God, um, you know, and to lead your family to Christ, lead your wife to Christ, lead, lead your children to Christ. Um, it's not your career. Of course, God would have blessed you with gifts and, and, and skills and talents, you know, but that's also, you know, of course, um, there is, that's also to bring glory to God. That's also to bless other persons. That's also to serve other persons, but that's separate from your primary purpose. The primary purpose is to serve God and to worship God. Now, how you serve God and worship God, no, that's where your skills and your gifts and your talents all come in. And that no adds to the color of diversity, the color of diversity in terms of, um, well, I was, let's say, I was blessed with the gift of eloquence. Well, I can communi communicate God's truth. I may not be uh, blessed with the gift of, of singing. That's, um, uh, that's someone else's gift. And they worship God and, and lead, move hearts and move minds to God with their voice through singing. But that's not my gift. My gift is something completely different. You know, so I think, uh, you know, I think, I think, uh, separating the primary purpose from how you um, were positioned to um, bless others. And, and, and I think that's also uh, important to appreciate and that will simplify things because attacking this question, oh, what is my purpose? It can get pretty complicated very fast. Just my two cents. Thank you very much for that contribution, um, Andrew. I've got some um, comments here in the chat. Someone says, um, sorry, I was trying to navigate this system. I don't know if um, IOB can read um, Sister Bola Dale's um, comment. It says, and can you say it in the chat, please? Yes, that's fine. Yeah, I yeah. can take that up. Thank so, you. So, um, Bola uh, welcome, sis. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's, she's my sister, beautiful sister there. 
um, she's written an objective self appraisal of oneself is key. Mm. And number two, invest in yourself, be empowered. This is exactly what we talked about today, isn't it? Uh, number three, she said, have a mentor. Elder Bolaji mentioned that as well. If you can't deal with it during courtship, please don't say he or she will change. Bet better not to go into marriage um, with all the baggages. I'm adding that. <laughs> May God help us all. But basically, she's just um, summarized um, some of the key things that we've talked about today, talking about self MOT. Um, she talked about self appraisal of oneself and investing in yourself, which was the big core of our presentation earlier on having a mentor, and if you can't deal with it, run. Do you want me to go to the other ones? I mean, if there's any comments in there that is um, okay. relating to what we're talking about, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Um, Andrew has suggested um, to uh, read uh, The Purpose Driven Life, which I've read, a, beauty, a really great book by Rick Warren. Hit Amazon if you don't have it and order it tonight. Um, we've got hands up. So I'm not sure whether Andrew's hand is a legacy hand. Um, if Camilla. it's a legacy hand, you can put it down, but then there's Camelia as well. Camelia, please. Hi, good evening. Still Sabbath here, so happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, sis. Thank you. I like your smile. You're so energetic and bubbly and that's so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> ah, all right. Um, so I want to thank both presenters this evening for the presentation um, because for me, I can say that it is the Holy Spirit that has been working. My pre the presentation this morning that I went to in another ministry plus these presentations and what I've been talking to God about for some time now. And I'm pretty grateful. It has helped me to put some things into perspective, um, some things that were floating around in my head, some things that I had written down on paper. Um, so thank you. Um, what stood out for me, like everybody's talking about, is living a purpose-driven life. Um, I don't know I, I, the doctor's name. Uh, but the female presenter, she spoke about her mother identifying some talent, that talent that she had, and her father identifying a talent that she had and, you know, pointed her in a career path. And it's the same thing for me. Persons would, you know, hint at certain things. And that can help us to also identify our purpose in life. That thing that when you wake up in the morning, it's just that thing that you would do. You can do it being half asleep is a thing that you would lose sleep doing or preparing for. It's that thing that makes you smile when you are preparing it, when you are finished, it's ju you just feel accomplished. Um, and as Andrew said, your, your purpose is not your career, but your purpose is that thing that God has just planted that seed that makes you makes you feel as if you're living a makes you feel like you're living a fulfilled life um that for me is speaking encouraging persons doing presentations um telling stories to children um i believe that i have the gift of hospitality so i like to be around people and attend to people's needs um, my purpose in life is to impact people's life in a meaningful way which in whatever way God chooses for me to do it. Um, I want to thank you to the male for reminding me that, like I said, I'm going to try some African food. I don't need anybody to come with me. I can go all by myself and try fufu. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And just to go out and just become, just trying new things and becoming whole as a person and being empowered in who I am, single or dating, married or not, just being me. And that's what I want. That's what I got from it. And I thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Sister Camelia. Trust me, there is no crime in taking yourself out. I used to do it a lot when I was single. I'll go to, um, there's this 
one of, is it Nando's? Yeah, Nando's. I love going to Nando's. And when I get to the door, they were like, table for how many? And I'll just say, table for one, please, with my phone. And I go sit down, have my meal, enjoy my meal, and leave. I picked up different um, um, hobbies. I didn't know how to swim. I started swimming. I went, I joined a swimming class. <laughs> just, to, you know, just enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. I help my friends with their children. I'm always with them. Sabbath afternoon, I'll just bump with her that Sabbath afternoon because there's nobody at home waiting for me. I'll go with her, help her with her children. You know, just enjoy yourself and love will find you where you are. So don't, don't put your life on pause. Don't pause it because you're waiting for someone to come in. Enjoy that time you've got now, okay? Thanks for joining us today, Sister Camelia. Any other question, any other comments? Sorry, I'm busy. Sorry. Sorry, Gracie. Sorry? Oh, my internet. Gracie? I think my yes. internet is um, going up. <laughs> I, as I, no, it's my internet, not yours. Yeah, we can hear Are you, you now, Camelia. Oh, okay, it's our own internet, all right. Okay, and I say that while we are preparing, so while we are while we are in the wait, um, something that is really nice, like learning new recipes that could help you with your homemaking skills, learning to sew. I sew my I sew my first sewed my first dress last year. Learning to do DIYs and so many other things will make you feel better about yourself and to be more empowered. So you can stand up when you go outside. You stand with your back straight and your shoulders square. So the right man is not intimidated, but he sees something that he wants and he will pursue you. And don't think that wanting somebody to take to give you a rose, he will see that you are worthy of that Indeed. rose or a bunch of roses. He see that you are worth pursuing because you know who you are and whose you are. Also, if you don't have the money to go outside and maybe go to dinner, what you can do is open your cupboard. You have sugar in your cupboard with some essential oils. You can drop a few essential oils in the sugar, light a candle, go in your bathroom, turn on some warm water and just do a body scrub with an, some nice soothing music. Yeah, it kind of gets you, you know, take care of yourself and Enjoy who you are and the stage that you're at in life. Thank oh. you, Camelia. I can see Techno, Techno Pop. Um, what's your real name? And um, if you unmute. Techno Pop, your, your hand is up. Um, is that intentional would you like to say something it will just me, be connected okay. so you probably, uh, probably can hear you oh let me let me say something about uh uh purpose that i think may summarize what all of us we've been saying that your gifts are a vehicle. Your values are your GPS and your passion is your driver. So look at yourself. What are my primary gifts or my talents? What do I, what am I good at? What do others say I'm good at? So that will help you clarify what your gifts are, your primary or your secondary gifts, spiritual gifts or talents. Then next, what are my values? Do I value kindness? Do I value peace? Do I value orderliness? Do I value, you know, what are my values? What are the things that are important to the core of who I am? So you need to know your values. Once you know your values, like I value timeliness, I value uh, cooperation, you know, things like that. Seven values, find at least seven values, prioritize three. And then your passion. What will you do if you're not being paid? If you're not going to be paid for it, what will you do for free? They'll wake you up and you'll do it. Okay. So that will help you identify what you are passionate about. I'm passionate about guiding or leading people. You know, I just, 
I gravitate towards people who are confused. I gravitate towards people who need direction. So your, your, your passion now becomes the driver of your purpose. So your purpose is encapsulated in your gifts, your values, and your passion. Nobody can help you um, identify it if you have not identified those things for yourself, you know, if you've not been able to articulate those things. Somebody can help you bring it out of you by questioning you, but you need to identify those things. And your purpose can change over time. You can scale up. You can improve. You can expand, you know, but, but like but Andrew said, your our primary purpose is to answer the call. Every Christian has a call on your life. Every Christian. You can either answer the call, miss the call, drop the call, decline the call, forward the call. You know, everything we do with calls. But everybody has a call. And it is in your answering the call, receiving the call, that your purpose becomes empowered. Thank you so and much, I just want to Pastor. add one point to what yeah. um, Pastor Pastor Laure has said is that he just dropped as he was speaking to, um, as he was speaking is that considering everything that we've spoken uh, about this evening, it is very very important that we surround ourselves with people who are positive, you know, people who have a positive mental you know attitude. It is very very important because it can determine you know what we will eventually you know become or how far you know, we go, um, you know, in life. So that, that is very, very, um, you know, important that I think, you know, that we need, you know, to surround ourselves with people who are passionate, you know, about us, um, you know, who can, who can give us a nudge, you know, who can tell us, uh, you know, who are not afraid, you know, to tell us the truth, um, you know, in love, you know, about who we actually, you know, are. So if we just know that as well. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Elda. For that. I don't know if we have any other contribution, any other question. I like that analogy. You can either pick the call, you can decline the call, you can forward the call, you know. So what are you doing with the call of God upon your life? That's our very primary, you know, purpose, answering the call of God upon our life. What are we doing with that call? You know, some of us, we, we are afraid but sometimes you have to do it afraid. And in the process, God will empower you. He said, it will, it will enable the call. You know, he's not looking for someone perfect. He wants you the way we are to come to him. And whatever that thing that he has laid upon your heart to do for the kingdom, just do it afraid. And God will empower you to, you know, be the best at it. Does, does anybody have any other question? Sister Yobi, I know you're monitoring the chat. Is there any question in there? Um, if um, Pastor Israel is still there, um, um, X, I'm sure his name is he, he or she, her name will not be X, but their device is X. They said, did the last speaker say purpose can change? Does purpose change or it's only how you achieve it that changes? And I remember, well, um, Pastor Israel was saying it. I actually typed what he said verbally. He said, your purpose can change over time. You can scale up you can improve. Pastor Israel, can you say more about that, please? Yes. Your purpose necessarily can improve. You know, you start with one level of it and then it improves. So your purpose effectively changes, not as if it's moving out of the will of God or from the call of God, but your purpose can be scaled. You can be, have a purpose that covers the children of this church. And then very soon you are dealing with a purpose that includes children in many churches. Or you are now dealing with a purpose that says, I can reach out to all children everywhere because now we have Zoom. You know what I'm saying? So your purpose can be scaled. Your purpose can expand. Your purpose, the purposes that I had as a campus minister you know, to minister to students on campus has expanded beyond campuses. I'm ministering to professionals with families. I'm ministering to communities. I'm ministering to organizations, you know, 
So I started with that purpose, three things, helping uh, young professionals academically, spiritually, and with their professions. So those are the things, academically, I'm academically, marital and professional leadership and providing for young professionals. When I was in my 20s and in my 30s, but over time, it has now developed into family ministries, helping couples thrive in their families and also leading organizations, you know, so it can scale from one place to a larger place. That's what I mean by change. Thanks ever so much, sir. Betty. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're on mute. You're mute. <laughs> Sorry, somebody asked the question on um, the chat, if we have a group. I said there's a broadcasting group because um, I'm not one for having just a group where everybody now keep posting and posting everything on there on WhatsApp. <laughs> I, get, <laughs> I get tired of that. But what a group where we broadcast, I just broadcast we, if, when we have a program, I'll send the flyer out and everything. So if you drop your number, um, I'll add you to that group and then whenever we have the next program, we'll, we'll, you'll be notified of that. Also, there's a group I've just created on Facebook. Before I do uh, ministry on Facebook, look for us on Facebook and um, join that group. There I will be, we'll, we'll be sharing you know, nuggets. Like I said, I've got book 30 days nuggets on dating and relationship. So the aim of that group is to share nuggets maybe once a week or on relationship, on dating and marriage, just to help us, things that you can work on. So if you have, like um, Sister Yobola said, we want um, goals that are achievable, smart goals. So if I drop a nugget there, I'll expect you to think to yourself, how do I make this work in my life? What am I going to do in the next two or three days to help me, you know, make this nugget, uh, to, to, to make this nugget part of my life, you know? practicalize it so that's what that um, group is for the um, the one i just created on facebook so if you drop your contact details we'll give you more information on that and i'm i'm trying to write some down i can see that my able partners in the ministry irv and um elder Bolaji, they are also taking notes so please join that group on facebook so that we can interact in that way um just yesterday i something I was, I think I was listening to someone. Anyway, it just dropped on my mind. I think I heard it from somewhere and it was like, wow, this is key. It says you can, your looks can help you attract someone, but it takes your brain to keep that relationship. So it, because a lot of people focus on looks, look, he has to be tall, dark, dark and handsome, have six packs and everything. You understand? But okay, if you attract that person, if you start talking to that person and there's nothing up there, hello, <laughs> that won't work. So you need to develop yourself as well. So if somebody comes to you and they're attracted to you because of your looks and you guys start talking and there's nothing up there, I'm sure that person will work. So those are the kind of things I'll, I'll be sharing on that Facebook page. So that's how we can connect. And on WhatsApp, like I said, we'll share um, information on when next we're having a program. By God's grace, the next program will be in March. Um, we don't have a specific date yet, but watch this space. You're going to hear more about it soon. So do we have any other um, question, comments, ideas you want to share about today's topic? It's been fantastic. I've learned a lot myself, you know, and I'm going to do that 360, whatever. IOB, I'm going to come to you for that 360 feedback, or what did you call it again? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I and I'm due for another one as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that, so we'll that's hold each a really other responsible. Good one. Yeah, it's a really good one. Um, um somebody Sam. say something on the chat. Is that a question? Um, um sorry, I'm just going to okay, speak. thank you. Um, okay, so we've got a from Lisa, um, what if a person's life is so full, in brackets, church, career, family, 
um, the potential partners perceive he or she just won't have the time for them or doesn't necessarily want one? Is the solution being increasingly creative in approach or trying a different route to what they want, purpose wise? Or. Okay. Somebody said, don't let church overshadow your home or something. Yeah, I think what I mean, the, the, the general comment I'll make to this is um, you see, in, 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 in life, in whatever we do, um, I mean, in life or wherever we find ourselves, we must be able to find a, to prioritize, um, you know, the things that we do. And um, we must be able to put, you know, um, if you're married, you know, church, career, um, there must be a way, you know, where, you know, you, you kind of like prioritize things in such a way, you know, that one does not um, affect um, the other. Um, it also boils down to um, communication, you know, between you and your spouse, um, if you if you are married, um, and how you know you can try to sync, you know, everything that you are that you are doing, you know, together in 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 one. You will see from the video that we shared, you know, that the lady um, Ibukon Awoshika, you know, did say that she had a very supporting, um, you know, um, husband, and you will see that even for her. You know, she's a. I, I don't know her personally, but I know of her, and um, she is a. She's, you know, very career. Um, I won't say driven, but she has a very um powerful, you know, um position, and because of her career, she can find herself, you know, being very busy. But when you have, you know, a spouse who is willing, you know, who is there, you know, to support, you know, to support you, then you find a way, you know, where you take care of, you know, the family short programs and things. I remember when I was, um, you know, the first elder at Blessed Hope, um, I was the first elder for eight years um, and I was very committed, you know, to what I was doing in church. But at the same time, you know, I tried to have time, you know, for my family, you know, as well. And these will include, you know, things like taking, you know, vacation, um, you know, having some, you know, time, you know, me time with your, you know, spouse, um, you know, me time with your children, you know, have a time when, you know, others, you know, can take, you know, some responsibility. So for example, at church, you know, if you're a leader, you must know how to delegate, you know, so that it's not just you, you know, doing everything, you know, even at work, at, if you're at the top of your career, you must still know, you know, how to um, delegate and not just seek everything. It's all All these things that will help give a leeway, but um, if one clutters everything together, then the truth of the matter is that you know one will sink, and a lot of other things you know uh, might suffer. And that's why you find people you know who uh, are, are career driven or career focused. They just focus on their career, and in the presence you know they lose their families. And when they get to that time, when they retire. Because they've not invested in their children, in their in their families, there's nothing you know for them you know to meet you know when after you know after they've um, um, retired. So it's very very important um, you know that there's a balance. There's a balance. There's a work life um, you know um, balance in everything you know that we do. And somebody said temperance in everything, um, and that's and that's the and that's the truth of the matter. Um, yeah. Um, someone said, where you invest is where you invest. So you need to prioritize. If, if at, at this stage in your life, you feel you're not yet ready for a relationship and those other things are crowding your, your space, then fine. But if you are ready for a relationship, then if, it's, if it matters to you, when you reprioritize whatever you're doing, then that relationship should come on top of your priority list and then you will make time for it. I recall when I was dating my husband, he was busy. He initiated the relationship, we started and everything. And it's like, when we want to talk, it's not available. I had to come out straight. I, there was no hiding. I just said, look, are you ready or not? I don't have time to waste. You must create time for this relationship. And guess what he did? Because he knew what he wanted. It was just that at that time he felt, okay, he was juggling well, but I told him, you're not. You need to create time for us to get to know each other. And trust me, he did. 
and thank God we, where we are today. So you have to understand yourself. What stage are you in your life? If you're at the stage where you are focusing on your career, fine. If you're at the stage where you're focusing on your studies, academic, fine. And if you think you've reached a stage where you want to focus on having a relationship and there's one on the table and you're not giving it time, then you are not, you are not doing yourself a favor. You're doing yourself a disservice. You need to reprioritize, uh, change your priority list, rejoggle things and set time apart uh, aside for that relationship because where you invest is where you will invest. Thank you. I don't know if there's any other comment, any other thing in the chat. Sorry, yeah. somebody said I yeah, should send I... the link, but Abisi's hand is up. Uh, just one minute, Brother BC. You can unmute yourself. Um, I can't um, minimize my screen because I'm recording. I just got that message. And I don't know if IOB can help me look for that um, link uh, and share it in the chat. Brother BC, please go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, before someone said I do to me. <laughs> <laughs> I um I was actually dating a, a girl and um it's actually an Adventist and I think it was like my first Adventist date and I you know we we go to church on Wednesday and sometimes we go to um uh, Sabbath school uh, teachers lesson on 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 Thursday and on Friday we go to choir uh choir uh, choir areas. And I remembered the day she said, why do you always have to go to church? Every time when you are, and the funny thing is that we are not in the same state. So I always call her, especially when I'm going back home from uh, church. And she's like, why do you always have to go to church? You know, later I now realize that, see, sometimes it might be a red flag because it, 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 if, you have a passion for something and someone is not, does not have the same passion you have, the person might actually bring you down. For example, if uh, I, I have a career, maybe I'm a hardworking person and I want to achieve something, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't create time. But when someone is now like always complaining about you know, why do you want to stress yourself? We are okay with what we have then. How can you move forward? So for, for me, I think it's a two-way thing. When you're doing it too much, it might not be good, but sometimes some people might draw you down if you are not careful as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brabisi, for that um, contribution. So, yeah. And... Funny enough, the topic we're thinking of next is red flags. <laughs> but obviously just touch on it. So that's a good one. The spirit is one. Thank you, Sister IOB. She shared the link. So go ahead and- um... I'm afraid, sorry. Oh, sorry, that's another link. No, sorry, that's not the yeah. link. That's not the link. Sorry, <laughs> if you can- I'll ask Rabolaji, I think he's on yeah. the group. Yes, um, please. I like um, if you can uh, someone someone has asked for the for link. Me. Yes, yes. That, thank you for sharing. Someone that. asked for another another one. The yes, uh, the video, the video. That shared during yes. the presentation. Yes. So I've shared. Oh, that. okay. Okay. And I've also I... shared the slides as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you can help us, Brabalaji, look for the link. Um, the Facebook um group. You are on that group. Um, if you can <laughs> help me look for it and share because I can't um minimize my screen because I'm recording. Okay. No, so, the, you, you um, want the video of Ibuka Wushika to be posted on Facebook? No, as in the, before I do ministry on Facebook, if you can look for the yeah. link. Oh, yeah. for the link, okay. And then- Yeah, if you can click it on it and copy the link so that people can oh, okay. go to it, thank you. Yeah, yeah. okay. okay. Um, I think we've done justice to this topic. What do you think? Hello, yeah, go ahead, um, please. Hello, yeah, Sister hello. Tola, go ahead. Yes, sis, I just um, I just feel impressed to share this thing that um, Pastor G once shared with um, one of the youth that he was talking to. He just asked her, 
because it was a question that someone asked, which um, um, uh, Pastor Laure and um, and um, Helda Balaji did justice to that. You know, what do you, um, how, how do you, or something like when you're waiting, how do you develop yourself and things that, and, and Pastor said, um, well, well, the Bible just said, understand your why. And Pastor um, said that, you know, if any man feels intimidated by you developing yourself. What, um, once Pastor G asked one of the youth that, um, that, what kind of man do you want to marry? And she went on to say, this man that is like this, this man that is like that, this man that is this, and this man that is that. And at that time, the youth was not like too serious. And, you know, of course, we all want very good and high, big, big things. And she listed all this thing about this guy. And Pastor G was just listening. And Pastor G was just like, okay. And my next question is, are you the kind of girl that this guy you've listed is looking for? You know, I think that really got that use. And... I saw the difference. So in the way, what I, and what I saw the difference that in the waiting time, what are you doing to make sure that this knight in shining armor that you, prepare, you, uh, you are looking for will, will be, you are the kind of person that that person is looking for. You know, you, some people want uh, the, the, the film I watched, and this this woman is meant to be a gold digger, and um, she she would try to date you know like important people, but she was really busy doing it. You know, she was learning a lot of MBAs, read, um, um, trips, uh, learning places in the world. It's just a film, but it, you can apply it to our own lives as well. You want to marry a guy that is a Christian. You want to marry a guy that is well educated that is, you know, you want to marry some, and are you that kind of person that this person will look for? So it can give a lot of our children something, uh, uh, something to do, what to know uh, that, okay, whilst you are waiting, you must be upping your own game for this kind. So if you are not upping your game, if you want a mediocre person, then by all means, you to sit down and, uh, or if you have these big dreams and you, um, you you don't bring up yourself up to the standard of the kind of person this person will want to be, then be ready to settle, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, I, think, I just thought to share that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Tola. That's a good one. And um, I think we, we, um, Elder Balaji talked on something like that as well, you know, during their presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any um, other, any other comment? I think we've really done justice to this topic. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I, I have, I'm always late. Um, like ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I'm always late. How can I improve on that? Use use the alarm function on your phone. Yes. Ah. The alarm function, you know, <laughs> that's what I've found out about lateness yes, and yeah. forgetfulness. Like this meeting, I was planning on it, but I knew if I didn't set an alarm, yeah. it would come and I wouldn't even know oh. it happened. So I set the alarm and even though I was driving, I was able to log on. So for those of us in the modern times, your iPhone has an alarm. You can ask Siri, hey Siri, uh, get me ready 30 minutes before the meeting on Monday, something, 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 you know, and calendar, calendar it so that you are not double booking yourself. That's the, and then have somebody else hold you accountable and be willing to submit to their accountability so that you don't feel bad. That they are, that they are holding you accountable. Yes, somebody just put it in the chat. If the event is such and such a time, set your alarm. What I do is set my notifications. I set like three notifications for myself: the first one, the second one, the third one. Okay, 
And if you want to get to somewhere on time, get plan to get there 15 minutes before the time and keep doing it. It may be frustrating at time, going against the grain of yourself, but tell yourself, I will be early. Don't say, I don't want to be late. I don't want yeah. to be late. Hmm. Say what you want. Yeah. I'll be early. Yeah. I'll be early. I'll be early. And that is what your body and your brain and your system will begin to program. They say we are going to be early, so we cannot be late. And they are all going to line up behind I'll be early. So you are a, a an early arriver, not a late comer. Okay. I'm an early arriver. And one, one other point I'll just make um, following up, um, Pastor, is that, you know, think of the things that you do that you get, that you do on time. So if, if you get to, if you can get to work on time and you're not late for work, then you must be able to do every any other thing as well in a timely um, fashion. It, it's about mindset. It's about mindset. Change your mindset. The mindset has to say, look, you know, I, I, I don't want to be late. I want to be early. Just like Pastor said, plan to be early. It's just simple as that change that mindset of, um, you know, being late and think of the positives, you know, that you do when you do wake up early or when you do do things, you know, on time, think of those, trace your step back and say, well, if I could do it on this occasion for this, you know, um, event, you know, then I can do it for this and I can do it for that. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, any final word um, from Elder Bola, J. Sister Yobola, Pastor Olare, before we go, before we round up today? Well, I just want to say thank you to everyone. And, you know, I'm just so excited <laughs> that I'm speaking to people from all around the world, South Africa, Nigeria, Canada. Uh, Doncaster in the UK, London, Watford, amazing. God bless you. Thank you so much. I've learned a lot. Um, we need to keep to time, so <laughs> we need to um, round it off. Um, but before you go, I would love to ask that in the chat, because we don't have the time to talk about feedback, but in the chat, if you can just um, type in what, what was good about today's event and what could be better for next time. Just um, a quick one in the, in the chat for us. Thank you. Elder Bolaji, do you want to say anything? I would say you have invested in yourself. Anybody who showed up, just like uh, Ayo said, show up. Anybody who showed up today has invested in themselves. So showing up today and staying is an investment in yourself. So congratulate yourself. Give yourself a good a good drink you know something nice just uh, sip some lemon water you know that would be really nice cold <laughs> wow thank you so much <laughs> so we should sip some lemon water thank you so much yeah as in yeah we can have a few minutes of talk back before we go feedback on today's program, I want to say thank like, you um, for today's Ayobi program. Said, that was what I had in mind of saying as well. That what are your feedback? What can we improve on? What have you enjoyed in today's program? So, as you're chatting, or you can unmute yourself and say something as we go, as we round up. Today. I want to say thank you to all of you. So, I really enjoyed the program too. It's a I've learned so many things from the program and I will say all of you to keep it up and God will bless your ministry. Thank you all. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. That's my big sis all the way from Canada. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us. And when I say my big sis, my real, real big sister, not just my big sister like that, my real go, go, go big sister. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, and Pastor <laughs> is my real brother too. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> really, really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate you for your support, for being here, and for investing in yourself, like Pastor said. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate you all. 
So on this note, we're going to thank you. From I mean, if I may just have one second. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm Monica here in the US, and my color is orange because I've had a vibrant day today. Um, this morning, which morning for us and afternoon in South Africa, I went to an, an astounding program. It was um, uplifting and elevating. And I met a wonderful woman whose voice you've heard today, Camilla Brown. Uh, you may want to keep in contact with her. She has a grand story. Um, I already um, line, I'm already lining her up for one of our programs from the Women's Ministry Department. And I'm very excited for this young lady. I'm putting her on blast and she can do with me whatever she likes afterwards. Um, and so I've come to this afternoon's program. Yes, I'm invested in the meeting. I got half of it. I'm going to tell you why I had to deal with some stuff on the phone. So I listened to part, watched some of it and took pictures where I got the chance. But thankfully, I'll get a copy. And so I thank you so very much for having a program of this intensity, things that we actually need and can do very well with. However, um, there are lots of programs out there and sometimes the people who should really get the, the gist of it are elsewhere. So we're gonna find ways to put it out in different small groups as we go along from day to day. Thank you so much for thinking about having a program like this, please don't stop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank great, you very great much. program. My, you did really well. Great guys. Thank God you, bless you very all. much, <laughs> Anthony. Thank you for coming. We have, yeah, we 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 have a we have a singles program starting in ten minutes, so they can go straight from your program to our program because a lot of the people that came tonight are part of our SAS ministry, so they're all around the world. So That's true. We told them to come, and they've been really, really blessed. Yo, thank you so thank much you. for the support and love. We're all doing the same thing, encouraging one another, empowering singles Amen. to be the best version of themselves. So yeah, we're going to round up now. I'll ask um, Pastor Olare to pray for us. As we round up, can, can I, and after the prayer, the, if you want to stay back to chat, if there's anybody you want to, to the, chat with, you can stay back for some few minutes before we log off. So, Pastor, please give us the closing yeah. prayer. Uh, oh, but Abisi, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to. I want to. I want to appreciate Pastor and uh, the other presenters for for the way you answered those questions. I think kudos to you all. This the maturity, the the um not judging people. Oh, why are you late? No, the 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 I just want to appreciate you. I want to appreciate the way you undo the program and the smiles and the, you know the, the relaxing life. <laughs> it's quite relaxing, and I think we need more of that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, Marabisi, for that vote of thanks. Thank you so much. Um Elder Bolaji, Sister Ayobola, and Pastor Olare for your wisdom, for helping us to glean from your wealth of wisdom. We appreciate you. God bless you real good. Over to you, Pastor. You're welcome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful experience of fellowship to exchange ideas, to rub minds, and to be enriched. Lord, I pray for the organizers and I pray that you continue to bless them with insight and capacity to be able to do greater things than this one. I pray for all those who attended and participated. Father, may your blessings be upon them as well so that they too can do great things as a result of this encounter. Pray for the presenters, continue to give them a fresh anointing. And Father, for those who are waiting on you for good spouses, husbands and wives, as you blessed me, Lord, I praise you bless them, that you are going to do for them things that they can only say, God did this because they have waited. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless. Yeah, really appreciate you thank you so much everyone 
So unmute yourself, say hello. Say hi to someone. <laughs> Connect. <Hello. laughs> Before we log off. I can see hello. Madame Abiola. Well. Sorry? Somebody is saying something. Oh, can I put the link to the single social? That's happening in about 10 minutes as well. Yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Definitely. Sure. Please go on. Yes, go ahead, please. Betty's oh, frozen. Everyone. Where does presenters... Thank you so much. No, I'm just saying we're done. Thanks, Sister Edith. self boss herself. Ah, Sister Edith, I can hear that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for following me. Oh, really? Just to tell me. Eh? Yes, Auntie Tony is there. Ah, <laughs> Just to tell me. Okay, I've seen her now. Thanks for joining us. Sister. Oh, Tosi. Hi. God bless you. Good to see Tosi. Tosi, allow you. Yes. Who else? Let me see. Hi, Miss Mende. Hi, Miss hey. Michael. Hello, Miss Adeji. Hi, Nicolette. Hi, Fantastic. Bola. Fantastic Bola session. Day. Day. Oh. Well Hi, done. Monica. Hi, Aviola. Hello, ma'am. Hey, nice to see you there. Thank you. <laughs> My sister from Abuja, Sister Bola. Hello, Betty. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Betty. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi, tell me. <laughs> I just don't use that name. Hello, Betty. 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 Hello, Betty.